Hello everybody and welcome back to the drama. Today we are in a bit of a different setting. I'm on a little bit of a trip right now as you can see. And today we're going to talk about a story that has been blowing my mind all morning as I've been learning about it. And it all surrounds a TikTok influencer by the name of Roger Clay who blew up about two or three years ago on TikTok just from singing covers of like a bunch of different songs. I'll play you a couple examples. Judas, Judas, uh, uh, Judas, Judas, uh, uh, Judas. Cause I'm just Ken. Where else I'd be a 10. And you may recognize him from being one of the faces of the POV genre on TikTok. Um, here's another example of some videos uh, that people have made with him in it. You're looking for a boyfriend, I see that. Give it time. So yeah, Roger is a 57-year-old Floridian, kind of the worst breed of person. But as you may have noticed, he's not really a singer by any means. He sort of gives off the vibe of your friend's dad who is trying to sing along with all of the songs that you and your friends like. And I guess you'd expect someone like this to be the target of like Gen Z kids calling him lame on TikTok, but people could not get enough of this guy. And years later, he's still doing the same thing. He's still popular from the same thing. He got a Rolling Stone article in November just from doing these covers. Seriously? Sorry. I mean, I, I'm running a business here. Come on. This guy posts like four to 10 TikToks a day, okay? He loves making these videos. And he's just singing over different songs that people ask him to do. And even in 2023, his videos still pop off regularly. He even has fans that call themselves Claymates. And one thing that was a little bit odd to me upon researching this video and looking back in Roger's, you know, TikToks is that he makes these duets with people who are just like putting the song in their TikTok and then he'll duet it and like sing along. Here's an example. Friends worldwide breaking all the rules. Like, like a song played again. And the people that he duets tend to be almost exclusively women. And so I really got a kind of an odd vibe from him off the start, but then I dove into this story and it really, it is very interesting. People really wanted me to talk about this like Zapotha. I still haven't seen a single TikTok about the Zapotha thing because I'm not on that kind of TikTok. Everyone was asking me about it, but lately I was like, I know that video is not gonna do well. Everyone was asking me to talk about Lil Tay on Friday and that was like the worst <laughs> video I've posted in a while. It, it flopped. And part of that might have been because it was only 10 minutes, but that, who cares about that? Who cares about that? Let's get to the Roger T. But before we do that, I want to read a quote, the final quote from his article from Rolling Stone. And here it is. Roger says, I think old people know not to be so self-conscious. That's one thing that always worries me about younger people. They care what other people think. But my message is to be yourself and enjoy each day. This wasn't my plan. I just wanted to sing. But now I'm getting totally educated on the new music and it's really good. So now I'm stitching in the new with the old, moving forward and trying to make people happy. What have I got to lose? Oh man, let's find out. <laughs> so fast forward to about a week ago and to the unassuming viewer, Roger was doing a live stream of him singing, but not just him singing, it was him and this younger girl by the name of Olivia. Now, Olivia only has a couple thousand TikTok followers now. I can only assume she had much less before this. She is not really a TikTok influencer, but she is apparently an aspiring singer who Roger was now collaborating with, I guess. But let me give you a look at what this live stream looks like. Not not knocking on. Not not knocking on. Not not knocking on. So yeah, they look like they're they're pretty close next to each other. They're singing, seem pretty comfortable with each other, and I don't really know how to feel about it. Now around the same time, Roger posted a picture with this girl on his Instagram. And people started doing a little bit of, of digging on her after this live stream. So people had some questions. And uh, I, I don't know how to say this, but people found photos of her showing that she just graduated from high school last year. She is about 19 years old, according to the photos and the graduation stuff going on. And people even scrolled back further and saw that Roger was liking posts of her, presumably in the last week, but he was scrolling back to photos of her 
from, you know, three years earlier in 2020. And if you do the math, 19 year old, three years ago, it's looking a little bit odd right now, right? So of course, as TikTok does, they go off to the races, they dig into this girl's stuff, and then everyone's freaking out about it because yes, it comes across as creepy. All of a sudden, you're singing with this girl on TikTok who doesn't have a following. It seems like you met her online while you have your, your base of 3 million people that follow you. And so yeah, a lot of people seemed rightfully creeped out by it, especially because Roger has a pretty hardcore group of fans who love what he's been doing the past few years, like singing along to popular songs, I guess, on TikTok. So then Roger makes this Instagram post that is just insane. And it seems like he immediately deleted it after because people had a lot of questions about the claims he was making and it really got bad fast. So Roger makes this Instagram post and it says, attention, <laughs> you should all be ashamed of yourself. Last night I went live with a talented 21 year old musician and singer. This is different than the claim that was made prior, which is that she seemed to be around 19 years old because she just graduated last year. We'll come back to that. He says, we sang to you. We sang for you. We sang in a well-lit hotel room and sat in business chairs. We sang in portrait mode for viewer convenience. The chairs were close to fit us both in the video. Then the rumors, dot, dot, dot. She's his 19-year-old GF. WTF. Some sick F. <laughs> Some sick F dug up a post of her graduation year, but failed to imagine that people graduate at different ages for various good reasons. And then in all caps says, singing is not a crime at any age, which is totally not suspicious at all. Roger claims here that this girl is 21 years old, and she, I guess she was like a double super senior in high school and graduated at 21 years old, which is just wild. Wild thing to say. So people start asking Olivia questions, everyone's asking Roger questions, and five days ago, Olivia comes out with a video that says clarifying false accusations. Please stop spreading rumors. Please share this word Let's click and watch a second of it So Roger just invited me to sing with him and it was a great opportunity a great experience I've never gone live before like that Especially on a live with like more than 10 people and I'm very grateful for the opportunity um, And I want to say thank you to all the people that are very supportive right now and you know sticking up for me It's just been a very tough time at the moment, you know dealing with the negativity. It's not right um, the hatred between uh, me, um, well, the hatred coming from other people onto the moderator. So, yeah, um, I, it really hurts to be called like a whore when, you know, people see you singing on a live with someone else. Oh, God, my camera's gonna die. So, yeah, you can get the idea of what she was saying. And it is pretty sad, you know, she's young. Uh, uh, you know, we will come to learn that she is. 19 spoiler alert, you know the video said to call off the hate towards her which I think is completely fair um, but it obviously did not stop people from being Concerned to say the least about about her situation around the same day Roger goes live on TikTok and People are very quick to ask him questions about the situation and he is very quick to block anybody who calls him predatory or even people who just start asking questions about what's going on with him and Olivia. Um, I did explain this. I was saying a nice meal for everybody to enjoy. Um, if you heard her voice, which I did hear, um, that was enough to um, fly across the country, which was state, which is next door to my job that I had to go to. Um, it was a very small diversion in my plans to meet somebody with a beautiful voice and sing to you. Sorry if that offended you. And so, and we were in seats. It's amazing. It's amazing. Why can't two people sing together for you, for free, without getting such abuse? It's amazing. Uh, unfortunately, we're not even besties anymore. We've decided that just we can't, we just won't um, collaborate anymore. Even though I thought I thought she had a beautiful voice and I thought it was an excellent night, we will not ever perform together again because of all the backlash. Internet can be thankful for that. I did not date her. No, it was a beautiful view, both landscape and her. She's beautiful. She's 
beautiful person with a beautiful voice. Um, it's also very taboo to sing with anybody under the age of 21. The hotel thing, yes, we needed a place to sing with good lighting. We sat in a hotel, propped up our gear, and sat in chairs that were squished together so we could fit a profile view. That is what happened. And we sang to you, and we were abused. He says that they just did a collab, and that was the first time they ever met. There wasn't anything romantic going on. But as people will come to find out, even Roger's own moderator in the chat of his TikTok live was telling people that yes, Olivia is Roger's date and they had gone to dinner apparently at Texas Roadhouse before. We'll learn more about that in a second. They talk about the Texas Roadhouse thing, whatever. So these are texts that Roger is sending to Olivia about this TikToker who's posting. Her and her boyfriend have kind of been leading a big charge. I'm talking about the whole Roger thing. There's so much stuff about it online. Just type in his name on TikTok and I'm sure you'll find even more but I'm trying to put this in a nice, concise video. But Roger starts sending texts to her, to Olivia, about people who are trying to expose him about all this stuff. And as you can see, the texts say, she is evil, she is sick, she is evil, she is sick. Let me know right now if you want her in your life. The fact that you would even consider interacting with this person has me very worried. Also, it is not in my DNA to keep a promise. I am going to release my cover of Board in Newport. I don't... Again, I think there must have been some context before of their conversations together, but things were getting very fishy. So people rightfully so start getting upset about the whole thing because it seems like Roger was deflecting a lot of questions about how old she was. He talked about it in the Instagram post saying she was 21. And a lot of people, again, rightfully talked about how this age difference is problematic. Listen, and I know the millennials hate when the Zoomers talk about problematic age gap, and it's not really even just problematic age gap besides the fact that he's 56 and she is literally 19, which is like, I don't, you don't really need to make a claim for why that's, that's creepy. I think even talking in the Instagram post and being like, singing is not illegal. You can sing at any age, and we just sing. That's what we did. It's really odd. It's very deflective and weird. And the fact that Roger has 3 million TikTok followers and Olivia does not have a following. And so we're going to hear about really how this all came to be, how this girl even ended up on Roger's live stream and how this whole thing went public in the first place. But a couple days ago, Roger made another cover of a song by Olivia Rodrigo, her new song, Vampire. Blood sucker, fame funker. Bleeding me dry like a goddamn vampire. Where he sings the chorus where Olivia is basically talking about how this person in her life has taken advantage of her because of her fame and success and that she got her heart broken or whatever because, listen, I'm not genius, okay? I don't need to explain exactly what's going on in the song. But a lot of people recognize that with the controversy going on and with Roger posting this song, it very much felt like he was trying to send some kind of message to the audience about the way he feels about this whole controversy. And if you go in his TikTok comments, it's very obvious that he likes all of the ones that are positive towards him and immediately blocks and removes any comments that have anything negative to say about him. Like literally you can't find a single one. So that brings us to yesterday when Olivia made a post about the whole entire thing and I think we should watch it because it looks like it's gonna be very interesting. Now, this video is posted, it says my truth on it and the text says, I will not hold back, please do not come after anyone important to him, but I know that it is not okay to do these types of things. And let's see what she has to say in this four and a half minute video. Um, my name is Olivia McCrawl and I'm 19 years old. Boom, right there. So already it's like, okay, Roger not only deflected the fact that there was anything romantic going on, but he also just straight up lied about her age and expected her to just be like, yep, I am 21, everybody. Even though I was on the high school volleyball team and I just graduated last year, I, I am 21 years old, which also like doesn't really make that much of a difference. 21, you know, 21 years old versus 19 years old, I think we can all agree that both, both ages are pretty bad, but it's maybe even worse to lie about it and still pick a young age of 21 
If you're gonna lie about it, at least make it seem less creepy. I want to let you all know I'm saying this now because I did not want to ruin the progress Roger Clay has made currently in his career. Late last week, I had randomly joined Roger Clay's live and saw he was making someone go to the Taylor Swift concert, or he was asking someone, sorry. Um, I was jokingly wanting to go since I would have not been able to go regardless because of my location and work. Roger had reached out to me and conveyed that I was a beautiful, and if it that I was beautiful, and if it wasn't for his daughter last minute, the person he chose would have been me. Oh my god. So, Roger's on live, and he's basically like, man, I wish I could go to the Taylor Swift concert with someone. I have one ticket. Super creepy if you have three million followers on TikTok, and you're asking your fans. Imagine if I just went on Twitter and was like, hey, does anyone want to go to the Taylor Swift concert with me? Oh, you want to go? Random person who watches me? You want to go? No. No. He revealed to me that he was a frequent flyer for work and he wanted to come see me. I was mutually attentive and I agreed for him to come see me and added that we could sing together. He said that he would love that as well as I would. Plus, a fancy dinner to where we could dress. The day after the concert, he flew to my hometown. The day after the concert. One day he's on live, he's messaging this 19 year old girl. A couple days later, he's on the flight. To go see her. I had made him aware I couldn't make it to him since I needed to hit the gym. I went to his hotel where he was currently um, at and let him know I was really hungry after the gym. We had gone to Texas Roadhouse to eat. Okay, so she goes to the gym, goes to the hotel that Roger booked and was staying at after flying to go see her. 56 years old we're talking about here. Holy shit. But this is when things get, uh, like extra bad i i mean this is already i'm like dude this okay i don't even know i don't even know what to say there's so much in this story that still is like coming out i mean this video is 17 hours ago i see people posting stuff from like an hour ago talking about new things they learned but let's keep listening to this because it gets very interesting after the gym we had gone to texas roadhouse to eat in the midst of conversation he made me aware that he had a vasectomy he was very loud, and it was made clear that people had heard him. Dude, what? What? He, he made it loud on purpose? It was clear people heard what he said to her at the Texas Roadhouse. You cannot do this at the Texas Roadhouse. That should not. Nope. No. I followed through with the dinner as I got to know him. We went back, and I said I had wanted to get my guitar to sing for this amazing opportunity. He asked if he could go, and I let him. Now, this is the point where I do, like, want to stop and be like, this is not, it, there's parts of this that aren't even, like, funny anymore. Because this is, like, textbook grooming and weird imbalance of power from an adult man who is not only old enough to be her father, but he's probably actually older than her father. But Roger goes from the hotel with her to her house to get her a guitar because she wanted to sing with him because it was an amazing opportunity. She has this guy on TikTok, 3.1 million followers. What could go wrong? We got to my house and as we arrived, he wanted to take a picture of my beautiful backyard and asked me to get the picture. I accepted, but didn't know it would be posted. So goes to the house. It's like I have to repeat every single one of these things because it's insane. And here's the Instagram photo they took. I've, pro I've probably down by now, but I've, I've seen it while I've been researching this, so I'll put it on the screen. And they took the photo together, didn't know it would be posted publicly to his Instagram with many followers. But, you know, here we go. When we got back to do the live stream together, I was excited. He went to the bathroom with the door wide open, and I stood there as his phone lit up. It was a very close-up picture of myself, which he, which had weirded me out a little bit. And this was a picture of me as his background. She was the phone background after a couple days? And he pissed with the door wide open at the hotel? Dude, this is like so much worse than I thought it was. This is like really sad and creepy. Um, okay, let's let's keep watching it. But dude, this is like, I don't even know. It's not even like, like this is just, this is fucking sad. Especially because this motherfucker has a daughter, dude. He has a daughter. He took his daughter to the Taylor Swift concert and fucking flew to this 19 year old girl's town and brought her to his hotel room to do like a live, just let's keep watching it. But I went on with it until the live started. 
When we went live, there was a ton of confusion as to who I was. People asking if I was his daughter or if I was his girlfriend. Um, while we were, we were singing, we had to get a little closer to make sure we fit in the camera. But moments later, he started to rub my back continuously, which I was not comfortable with. Eventually, I scooted away for him, from him, but that did not um, help anyways. So he continued. Um, after the live ended, he gave me his poems he wrote and he tried to kiss me. At the He wrote poems? Poems? Wrap it up, Robert Frost. You gotta go. Oh, God. Why can't the drama be fun anymore? It all is just sad and awful. Ugh. At the time, since I was alone and I felt obligated, I did so back because um, no one else was in there and who knows what could have happened. I almost made myself sick. After I went home and let him know I could not do this with all the hatred and continue to sing with or entertain him with the discomfort I was feeling, he understood until the next morning where he put the blame on me. He told me I had abandoned him, that I was supposed to see Barbie with him, the movie. Dude, go home and watch Barbie with your daughter, you jackass. What a freak. I, I don't even have anything to say. I mean, this says it for itself. You know, I think Olivia did something that is very brave, especially telling every aspect of the story and being honest about the way she felt in those situations. And although I think people are going to try to discredit her because of the first video and you're always going to have like fucking weirdos trying to call you a liar and a clout chaser for like coming out and saying these things just because the other person has an audience. But no, this every bit of this seems like it checks out um, and lines up with everything that everyone was worried about before in this case. And I am very sad to see that when she first responded, she didn't even feel comfortable enough being honest about it because so many people were saying gross things about her. But here, let's see the rest of it. I told him again, I couldn't do it with the way I was feeling. He continued to pursue me after his, this hate. Some mornings I would wake up with 45 messages. I even went live one night after feeling horrible about the situation and wanted to talk. I had eight people on there. I sang one song. Amazing grace for a sweet older woman. He messaged me shortly after and asked if I was happy with the spotlight. I gave my side as that I had been upset and needed some folks to talk to. Nothing wrong with singing to eight people. He said it was, in quote, disturbing how happy I was. I was happy to have a few select people that cared. He later called me a predator on another account that had what? reached out to him and called me a manipulative little girl. A person from his family commented and said they believe it was wrong and have been trying to get him help for a long time. I'm Olivia McCraw and I'm telling my truth and I hope that you hear it and are wise with all of your actions. This is just bringing awareness to the situation and you should never feel afraid to share your truth. Thank you and I hope you guys hear this. <sighs> okay, so where does that leave us? I mean, Roger hasn't made a comment since this, but you know, I'm gonna make a couple comments that probably are pretty obvious. You know, there are so many people on this app and he obviously isn't being honest about ages of people. And he is obviously seeking out women on these apps and there really is no way to prove that he hasn't done this before, but just without doing the live with her. This could be, somebody's underage teenage daughter. We don't really know how willing he is to go somewhere to go see. I mean, we know how willing he is. He flew to go see someone. And this is someone who has 3 million followers on this app. He makes money on the app. He sells his merch. And it turns out he's a predator. He is absolutely preying on women who not only want to find some sort of music career online and he has some sort of claim that he can help them get there with his following, even though his following is just people who like to see him sing poorly. Oh, you guys know that I make these videos like the same day, like I wake up and then I make the video and put it out right away. So things are like still coming out as I make the video, but I wanted to talk about a post there's actually two more posts that olivia made about the situation one of these is um, a lot of comments that roger 
made on his own Instagram post about it. You know, he's claiming that she had two kids, that she said she was 21 or something like that, and calls her extremely manipulative and attention-seeking. I hope she receives therapy, claims she was extra flirtatious with catfish phrases, obsessive posting, none of which uh, would ever cause a normal 56-year-old man to go fly, to go see a, a 19, even if he thought she was 21. Are you insane? Oh my gosh. And then she also posts some more texts with him, um, calling her beautiful. It says that his daughter is 20 years old. He said, my daughter, 20, surprised me and cleared her schedule for the Taylor Swift concert and then asks where she's located. Oh my gosh. I, oh my gosh. Uh, this is, yeah, this is, I don't know. But yeah, that is like kind of the summary of the whole story. There is so many little clips in between that you can check out on TikTok if you look his name up. But I definitely think that this is a story that needs to be bigger online because of how popular Roger is and how he's willing to lie and deflect and find solace in people who are willing to back him up, even though his online career may be over, it doesn't mean it's going to stop him from preying on people and finding young girls who he can connect with because he is like this popular influencer. Messaging fans like this in the first place is not good. Flying to them and making advances and doing very disgusting things is a whole nother story. And I am interested to see where it goes because I definitely think he needs to have some sort of consequence for this. Anyways, I think it's good that this story is becoming so public. I feel like people not enough are able to see signs of predatory behavior in men and watching someone explain their thought process through the whole situation can definitely open the eyes to other people who are in a similar situation or people who will find themselves in a similar situation in the future. If you are someone who is a fan of someone online, you should be aware that there is that imbalance there. If you do have private communications with them, they should be appropriate. And you know, I think that's it. That was a pretty gross one. I think it's pretty interesting to see someone that popular get into a controversy when he is as dumb as he is. I don't know how something like this hasn't happened sooner from him. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it didn't leave you feeling bad about it. Um, if you wanna watch some of my other videos, there's probably some that have a happier ending than this one. My brother made a video on some TikTok drama, I think a couple days ago. And that story is wild. So I'll link that one below because, you know, I'm happy that the drama's running in the family. You know, I'm happy that he found that one before I did. I wish I got to tell that story because it is so good. But yeah, he does a great job at it. So you can go check out that video. And yeah, I posted about Lil Tay on Friday. If you want to watch that, people kind of already know the story, but you know, it is what it is, okay? I'm gonna be here for another week, so let me know on Instagram or wherever you can find me what other topics you wanna hear me talk about and listen to my band, Queef Jerky. You know, you can find us. Links are all in the description. And I think that's it for me. I will probably see you on Wednesday. Stay safe. Don't talk to creepy old men. Don't talk to creepy young men. Maybe just, maybe we just stop talking to men altogether. Even me. Okay, that's it.